Saints, in this fascinating prophecy update video, we're going to take a look at two Holy Spirit led videos that were released on this channel. Our World War Z predictive programming video, as well as the total lunar eclipse pointing to nuclear escalation, highlighting Daniel chapter 7. As the themes in both of those videos are converging right now, in fact, within a 24 hour window. And so not only are we going to compare those two videos, but we want to see how it fits into the context of this one slide that we used in the nuclear eclipse video, highlighting a window for something like this to occur. And the most provocative part of this video will be the significance of the winter solstice of 2022, as it points to the return of the plumed serpent and why war marks his return. As the ultimate purpose of this video is to highlight what triggers the rapture. Because although we can't know the day nor the hour, as we will see for some very technical reasons outside of Jesus telling us that we can't know the day or the hour, but I believe saints, the rapture of the body of Christ is very close as that will be the theme of today's video, the war rapture. And so with that said, saints, welcome back to Supernatural by Design. My name is Jared. I pray that you've been having a wonderful and blessed week and that God's grace and peace is with you. Saints, we serve an awesome God and he desires relationship with us. And my hope by the end of this video that you will be encouraged not only of the closeness of the rapture but how much God loves us and that his peace will provide us the strength to make it to that glorious day. Titus 2.13, our blessed hope, which is the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. And so with that said, saints, if you could do me a huge favor and hit the like button, share this video, comment on this video, any and all interactions you all do help to support this channel, and I greatly appreciate that. And if you're new, definitely consider subscribing, which, by the way, we just hit 10,000. That's awesome, saints. God is amazing, as he deserves all praise, glory, and honor. And now, let's begin the show. So to begin, let's recap real quickly the two videos that are converging on the same day. So beginning with our World War Z video and how Belarus is connected to it. Because beginning with the title of the movie, World War Z, Z is the exact symbol that Russia uses for its theme of victory. And so we saw that there's a Russian connection to the title of the movie. And then in one particular scene during the movie, when the zombies are overtaking Jerusalem, the hero escapes on a Belarusian plane. Which is interesting because in real life, Belarus and Russia are longtime allies. And so turning to this slide, we also discovered that Z is the symbol used instead of the equivalent Cyrillic letter 3, demonstrating a connection that we discovered on this slide, that the naming of the movie World War Z is predictively programming World War III, which matched a numerical pattern that we discovered when looking at the dates of the start of World War I and World War II. As the Ukrainian invasion, all three dates all added to 68, matching the World War Z equals three connection. And therefore, because Belarusian Airways was depicted in the scene in Jerusalem, the key city of the end times, that Belarus plays a role in the escalation of World War III. Now, this video the Holy Spirit led me to put together and I published on October 13th of 2022. And so, fast forwarding to December 14th of 2022, this news headline came out that the Belarusian army moves towards Ukraine for a surprise check of combat readiness. 
as Belarus began an unscheduled quote-unquote emergency check. And of course, Belarus, being a long-time dependent ally of Russia, that they might directly enter into the war. Which is why I believe the Holy Spirit led me to this conclusion, pointing out that predictive programming detail within the movie. And again, this article came out on 1214. So pulling up our timeline here from our lunar eclipse video, 1214 would be right here in the middle, which would be seven days from the full moon Mars conjunction on 127 when the moon perfectly eclipsed Mars, highlighting the anniversary of Pearl Harbor. A very unusual conjunction, as most times conjunctions are side by side, but this one completely covered Mars on the exact day of the full moon. And one more thing important to note is that that was a seven day duration, landing on 1214, a multiple of seven. And when we look at our triple conjunctions on the outside, 1228 also happens to be a multiple of seven. You see a theme here of the number seven? That, saints, is supernatural by design. And this is just the first video that we're looking at. Now let's turn our attention to the eclipse that is nuclear. A video that the Holy Spirit led me to release on November 7th of this year. And so let's recap that and then we'll take a look at the article that corresponds to it. Okay, so our 11.8 total lunar eclipse was the last lunar eclipse of our Israeli tetrad. As we saw in our celestial countdown to Christ's thousand year reign plays a significant role in the celestial pattern as a whole. And as an aside, but we'll talk about later on in the video, as I don't want to ruin the continuity of the topic of this video. But we're going to talk about this particular tetrad once again at the end. But nonetheless, the last moon of this tetrad pattern occurred on 11.8, which was what the nuclear eclipse video was about. And pulling up this slide, because as we discovered, that eclipse occurred at the same time it conjuncted with the planet Uranus. And as we learned, Uranium derives its name from the planet Uranus. And anyways, that there was a nuclear connection to this total lunar eclipse. But also, that this eclipse was tied to Daniel 7.4 and Daniel 7.5. As Daniel 7.4 is the beast of the winged lion, and we saw that that was connected to London and America, whereas Daniel 7.5 was connected to Russia. Definitely watch that video for more details. However, where that came from, the Holy Spirit made that connection in a previous video series about the Grand Alignment. So let me pull up this slide. As we dubbed this celestial pattern, the Israeli Parade of Planets. And anyways, America and the U.S. were specifically called out, along with Russia and China. And Iran was featured in that. So definitely check out that series for more details. However, coming back to our total lunar eclipse and its nuclear connection, as in that video, we specifically called out the countries, the U.S. and the U.K. versus Russia. Okay, now coming back to our timeline, where we just included the Belarus connection on 1214, this article came out on the exact same day. Nuke threat. Putin readies nuke missiles for launch as Yar's rocket able to strike UK and US is locked and loaded in silo near Moscow. Saints, that's the exact three countries called out in this nuclear video. And so because we have these two themes converging on the same day, within this winter solstice December conjunction to conjunction timeline means that something very significant is about to happen and that is war and saints this is where our plume serpent becomes very significant in fact 
even matches the number seven pattern because it's tied to the winter solstice. As that is on December 21st, the 21st would be our seven times three connection. And so it falls in line with this theme of war and why we now need to go back to the year of 2012 to understand this connection as it pertains to the Mayan prophecy. Now, I think calling it a prophecy is a little bit of a misnomer in that Satan already knows how this is going to end. And so the best thing he can do is to wrap the truth with lies and try to paint a different picture. Now, this isn't just exclusive to the Mayans, as we also see this consistent in many mythologies throughout time in various cultures. And so the only prophecies that we should take to heart are the ones that we find in God's word. But we should also be cognizant of Satan's schemes to deceive. And this would be an example of one of those. Just want to lay that as a foundation before we dive into this topic. And so with that said, let's dive into this plume serpent connection and how it relates to our theme of war. If we go back to the year of 2012, there was a circulating popular prophecy of the Mayan winter solstice prophecy that the world was going to end. Remember that? Well, it turns out, and I'll leave a link in the description, to a professor that studies this stuff. It's a TED Talk. But she pointed out that this prophecy, December 21st of 2012, was the halfway point of a 20-year period, which means, saints, that 2022 would be the end cap of that prophecy, this winter solstice. In fact, let me just play a portion of that TED Talk where she talks about this. Here we are. This is the Milky Way. We all know what the Milky Way looks like. This is the crocodile because the Maya see it as the crocodile. That's the eye of the crocodile. That's its nose. And this is its lower jaw. So we see this as the dark rift in the Milky Way. The Mayas saw it for 2,000 years as the mouth of the crocodile. And so that's a creation place, a very important creation place in Maya cosmology. And here we have our sun will align with the dark rift of the Milky Way on December 21st, 2012. And the December sun has been in that position for about 10 years every December 21st uh, and will be in there for another 10 years. And so it's a 20-year period, and December 21st, 2012 is the middle of that period where the December solstice, processed winter solstice sun, lines up with the dark rift in the Milky Way. Isn't that interesting? And moreover, is a part of the Mayan prophecy that the plume serpent, Kuku Khan, or Quetzalcoatl, I think I butchered that, returns in the end times which also fits a very unique end times detail that we'll see here in a moment. Not only that, but this is somehow connected to CERN. Now, arguably, this topic of Kuku Khan and the Mayan prophecy and CERN definitely requires a separate video. So I'm going to keep this high level and then just stay posted for that future video. Because the ultimate point of this video is to demonstrate how this Return of Cuckoo Khan is related to this war theme that we're seeing for the month of December, as he himself was the war god of the Mayans. So a war theme and a war god. Now, real quickly, I want to tie this 11 connection that continues to appear with this return of the plume serpent, as the number 11 is a very significant number when it comes to the end times. Now, I have four examples, but I want to demonstrate that when you compare all four examples together, presents a very convincing argument that these details aren't coincidental, regardless of how insignificant each one may seem, as they demonstrate a spiritual world that is behind this one. And so I have four examples. The first one comes from the TED Talk itself. Because did you know, saints, that Stella 11, the statue that was discovered that has the hieroglyphics that point to this 2012 winter solstice, it was written on Stella 11. 
Now, I know from an archaeological standpoint, that's probably just a numerical order that they stumbled upon this. But is it really just coincidental? Check this out. Because back in 1994, a series called Tarzan, The Epic Adventures was running. And in Season 1, Episode 11, the title of it was The Return of Cuckoo Khan. In fact, there's even a scene later in the episode where they go through a portal, our CERN reference. But Episode 11 is probably just coincidental. Or is it? Let's take a look at our third example of the number 11. As I'm sure you all recall, there was a great conjunction that occurred on the exact day of the winter solstice of 2020. Remember that? As Jupiter and Saturn hadn't been this close in over 800 years. It's a very rare celestial event. Well, anyways, it turns out from that date to this winter solstice of 2022 is 731 days. 7 plus 3 plus 1 is our 11 connection. And another very unique connection, interestingly enough, in the entertainment industry, was the new Black Panther movie called Wakanda Forever. Because remember the villain in that movie? Namor? Which spelled backwards is Roman and is a part of the original character storyline for his name, which we'll come back to here in a second. But in this particular movie, they wanted to modernize him and make him a little more inclusive. And guess what they called him? called him Kukul Khan, the feather serpent god. That's right, Kukul Khan, the plume serpent, who Revelation 12 calls the serpent of old. And guess when this movie came out? 11-11. Isn't that interesting? And so, saints, we have had four 11 connections to this Kukul Khan from the Mayan prophecy. And we are going to see why this is significant to Bible prophecy. Oh, and it's also important to note that there is a connection within this Wakanda Forever movie that ties to CERN as well. And the reason why CERN is popping up and connected to this in some way, I won't pretend I know the specific details, meaning the order that this plays out in, However, in our Israeli Parade of Planets video series, previously discussed on this channel, the turning on of CERN was literally tied to that celestial pattern. But one more connection I want to make before we tie this winter solstice connection into our war theme is that the 11 connection that we established in this pattern to Kuku Khan is tied to the 11th horn, the Antichrist. That we read in Daniel chapter 7 verse 24. With the 10 horns plus an additional one that rises up. That's 11. And another title for the Antichrist. Which technically is not the title the Bible ever calls this end time figure. But is the seed of the serpent. Which by no means is coincidental that Kuku Khan is the plumed serpent. Which, according to Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, the prince who is to come is tied to the people group that destroyed the city and the sanctuary in 70 AD, which means that he will be Roman. And interestingly enough, the bad guy from Wakanda Forever, Namor, his name spelled backwards, is Roman. Which is also a subtle 11 connection, as the number 11 mathematically is related to symmetry. And so even the name of the bad guy in the movie, whose origin story is changed to Kuku Khan specifically, is related to number 11 and provides us a fifth example indirectly. So we'll say 4.5, which is not by coincidence as the creators of Namor is how they came up with that name in the first place. And so it was very intentional is my point. But moreover, saints, this 11 connection ties to the Antichrist and to this Cuckoo Khan arriving on the scene here very soon. 
And further evidence to support this comes from that Purim setup video as the Antichrist eclipse takes place next year, highlighting Hitler's birthday and tracing the ecliptic sorrows pattern backwards to the very year Hitler came to power. And so definitely check out both videos from the Celestial Countdown to Christ's thousand year reign. It's a very scientific approach at studying God's fascinating celestial signs. And so coming back to our December winter solstice timeline, let's place Cuckoo Khan right here, pinpointing the winter solstice, our seven times three connection. Because the celestial setup that you see on the screen is further supported by scripture, as we'll see here in just one second, because I want to interject a quick point from a recent survey that I took on the channel. When asking how many of you are seeing 1111, out of the 577 votes, 432 of you are seeing this number. And the reason why that is, saints, is because of the verse, Isaiah 1111. A very unique verse, highlighting the second time, that's a key point, the second time that Israel is regathered. And the only time that that has happened in history is in 1948. And so the 1111 that God is drawing you to see, saints, is one of God's many ways confirming that we are in the fig tree generation. A very significant transition point that the Apostle Paul even alludes to in Romans chapter 11. And so as we get closer to that switch point, it's been amazing to see how many saints are seeing the number 1111. It's certainly been increasing. And so if you are seeing that, rest assured, saints, God is confirming how close we are to being in his marvelous and wonderful and his loving presence. <sighs> Saints, I can't wait. And I know you can't either. Maranatha King Jesus, the rapture is soon. And so with that being said, let's now see how this rapture of the body of Christ is tied to our timeline that we've been discussing throughout this video. And so here, let's now discuss the final two components of this timeline, the triple conjunctions on the outside. And to do that, I'm going to play you a quick scene from the Ezekiel 38 video, as that is where the connection and significance of what this conjunction means. And I will leave a link in the description so you can go check it out, and I highly suggest that you do, because it's very interesting. So here, check this out. Wasn't that this whole Aquaman or Namor from the Black Panther being equivalent of Poseidon, the king of the sea. What's interesting is that Neptune and Jupiter mean the same thing as the conjunction itself symbolically points to Poseidon, right? Because Jupiter is symbolic of the king planet. It is the king planet, the king of kings, Jesus Christ. But it can also be just for kings or leaders in general. And as we've already seen, Neptune for the sea. So, king of the sea, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. Wasn't that interesting, saints? Our Cuckoo Khan is even connected to this conjunction. But here, let me play one more clip from our Total Lunar Eclipse video as it brings in the moon part of this conjunction. So here, check this out. Because when running some calculations, the moon for the entire month of December only conjuncts with two planets twice. As you can see from this calculation table that I made from Stellarium, highlighting Neptune and Jupiter, which is very interesting as Neptune and Jupiter were the two planets in conjunction that connected us to the Poseidon weapon from our grand alignment pattern. 
Isn't that interesting, saints? Do you see how this is all connecting together from our theme of war, nuclear war, even tying in this feathered plume serpent? In addition, with regards to nuclear war, the use of Russia's Poseidon weapon, similar to the other weapon systems being named after Neptune, like the Neptune rocket that sunk the Russian Moskva, or somewhat similar, the 101st Airborne Division practicing Neptune strike in the event of a Russian attack. But moreover, this conjunction is a play on that. So let's place the Poseidon weapon here. And so now, looking at this holistically, there is a theme of war, nuclear war, that appears to be connected to this feathered serpent. And based on all the evidence that you have seen throughout this video and previous videos, I really want to stress the significance of this Holy Spirit-led information. Underscore, circle it. This is not a rapture date setting channel, but a Holy Spirit led channel demonstrated by the fact that these themes are coming to play in real time. That's significant and shouldn't be overlooked. In fact, to that point, let me just take a step back and cover some theology about the Holy Spirit before we dive into the interpretation of this timeline that the Holy Spirit has been putting together. Because, understandably, the interpretation of these celestial signs that the Holy Spirit reveals is only as good as the theology of the end times that he's revealed earlier in my walk with Christ. And so, moreover, they go hand in hand. So, I'm going to steer off the road here from this war connection and the rapture and cover a few theological topics. I've added chapters to this video so if you want to skip forward to the war rapture part of this video, then please feel free. However, I definitely suggest that you listen to this part. As the Holy Spirit wants me to add more theology to these videos. Because again, the only reason why these celestial signs are panning out the way they do is because God has spent years laying out end times theology. And so in this little section, we're going to talk about Matthew 24, 36, highlighting no one knowing the day or the hour. And the two extremes that we got to be careful of not to take a hold of. And then discuss one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as that is the foundation for these videos. And why I can't take credit for this content and how this content comes about. And remember, you can always fast forward. But anyway, saints, let's go ahead and dive into this and cover Matthew 24, 36 from a rapture date setting perspective. Because recently I heard one of these date setting channels pride themselves on being 99% wrong and are just trying to be that 1% accurate. That's scary. I mean, imagine if the prophets of the Old Testament or even in the New Testament, held themselves to that kind of standard. Well, it would make one of the most well-known gospel passages lose meaning because it's based on accurate prophecy. And so in the context of talking about future events and specifically speaking about rapture date setting, that is a very heavy area of theology and should be of utmost importance as the body of Christ to be accurate. Saints, we should be taking God's word seriously and not present misleading information just to be sensational. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about the gift of prophecy. In fact, Paul even lays out rules and guidelines for that Holy Spirit gift. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I'm specifically referring to rapture date setting. And one more thing before we discuss the interpretation of this timeline is that I continue to see with these rapture date setting channels 
if they are willing to reinterpret the fact that even Jesus tells us no one can know the day or the hour, not even the angels, but only our Heavenly Father. In fact, Acts 1 7 makes that point again, as it's our Heavenly Father that sets these times and dates. And so they're having to jump through hoops and hurdles just to try to derive some sort of date, which tells me then they're going to be loose in other spots of end time Bible prophecy. And sure enough, a lot of the timelines after their rapture date typically is no longer even biblical. In fact, I can even prove it. Here, let me pose this pop quiz. It's a multiple choice quiz. What begins Daniel's 70th week? Is it A, the 2020 phenomenon, quote unquote? Is it B, the Shemitah cycle? Is it C, the rapture? Or is it D, the signing of a peace agreement? Give you a couple seconds to think about it. Well, saints, if you guess D, then that's exactly right because that's what we read in the book of Daniel. But if you guessed A, B, or C, then you're probably watching too many YouTube channels. And really think to yourself, when watching these types of channels, is A, B, or C included as their foundation for their conclusion of their rapture date? If so, then that should be a red flag. Saints, we wanna stand on biblical truth, not sensationalism or man's interpretation. Let's have God lead us in our understanding of end time Bible prophecy. It takes reading his word and something I could probably do a better job of emphasizing. Saints, we need to be studying and reading his word. A lot of these channels would not have traction if we simply just read our Bibles. Oh, and on the flip side, if we solely use the verse but no one knows the day or the hour to justify not understanding end time Bible prophecy, then that too should also be relooked at. As Jesus even tells us, we can know the season of his return. In fact, I have a great video already on that side of the coin called, Can the End Times Be Known? And I will leave a link in the description for that video. And so moreover, there appears to be extremes coming from both sides when interpreting this verse. Now, I say this in all love, saints. I'm not trying to beat up any particular channel. That's, that's not the goal here. It's simply to turn on our Holy Spirit antennas and really weigh spiritually what people are saying, including myself. I can have air. I've had air on this channel before. But for the most part, Things have been accurate. I don't just make videos to make videos. I only make videos as directed by the Holy Spirit. And again, I'm only saying this to help strengthen the body of Christ, not to bring it down. After all, saints, knowing the future is really cool. In fact, Paul even desires that we chase after the gift of prophecy in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. And why is that? Well, God first laid this theological insight from actually reading this verse in the God's Word translation, which states, not prophecy, but to speak what God has revealed. That brings a different dynamic that's more of an umbrella type of phrase, because speaking what God has revealed can be past, present, or future. It's just speaking what God has revealed to you. And what's even more incredible, saints, when we take a look at the Greek word that's used here by Paul, or I should say the Holy Spirit, can mean to foretell, prophesy, but here's the key one, or set forth a matter of divine teaching by special faculty. And so divine teaching comes from Christ. That's why Paul wants us to have this gift, as it goes a long way, which is confirmed by Jesus himself in John chapter 16, verse 13, that the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. In addition, 
he will disclose to you what is to come. Nor will it ever contradict anywhere else in the Bible things that the Holy Spirit has said as well, such as not knowing the day or the hour, as the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth, which can't contradict itself. We serve an incredible God, and what an amazing first gift he has given to us as believers, his Holy Spirit. And so now, with that being said, and concluding our theological part, let's go ahead and discuss the interpretation of this celestial pattern, as we have the theme of war and the feathered serpent, and how this connects to the rapture of the body of Christ. And so, let me use this diagram to paint this picture. With the rapture on our left, nuclear war on our right, a convergence point followed by the serpent downstream of our convergence point. And so, let's pick apart these three topics. And first, let's cover the rapture, as it is a pre-tribulational rapture as it's not so much a timing thing, but it's for a technical reason. And that is the whole purpose of Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year tribulation. As Daniel 9.24 tells us, the sole purpose of all 70 weeks is to redeem and restore Israel. The moment you lose sight of that, the moment the end times timeline can run into air. So there's a technical reason why the rapture has to be pre-tribulational. In fact, I even have a video called Why Does Jesus Return? Not when, but why. As the Holy Spirit made it clear to me that the why helps answer the when. And I'll leave a link in the description. But nonetheless, let's take a quick look at the verses that Paul gives us about the rapture. As we will take a look at two. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And five. And so comparing 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52 against 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Chapter 5 will be significant here in a moment. However, the main takeaway from these two passages of Scripture is that it's tied to a trumpet. The rapture is tied to a trumpet. And Paul even tells us it's a mystery, by the way. But what does he mean here? Well, the rapture is not a mystery. You can find that in the Old Testament. Nor are the feast days of Israel. That's not a mystery. In fact, we even know the day and hour of those feasts. Not to mention those are exclusive to Israel. And why I believe a popular misconception is that the rapture is tied to a feast of Israel. And I'm guilty of that too. In fact, I assumed at face value, just based on my own misunderstandings, that the rapture was tied to a feast day. But if we take a look at these two passages and why I have them up, is that Paul never ties them specifically to a feast day. He just mentions trumpets. Now, the feast of trumpets absolutely is a great guess, but Paul doesn't technically say that. And so it begs the question, is there a popular human tradition in that assumption? I would articulate yes. And since that is not the case, what are these trumpets in reference to? Well, Paul gives us a detail in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, and specifically verse 3. While they are saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they will not escape. And so we have sudden destruction tied to these trumpets. Well, if you turn with me to Numbers chapter 10 verse 9, this will help to unravel the mystery that Paul is talking about. It states this, And when you go to war in your land against the enemy who attacks you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets so that you will be thought of by the Lord your God and be saved from your enemies. Which is an exact parallel of what Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. As when the trumpets are blown, 
we as the body of Christ get to escape and be caught up into the air. And so the trumpets in the context of Numbers chapter 10 is in reference to war, which makes sense with what Paul talks about with sudden destruction as we'll be thought of by the Lord and be saved from our enemies. In fact, here's another example of that and interestingly enough ties to the definition of a watchman's duty, which comes from Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 2 through 6. Son of man, speak to the sons of your people and say to them, If I bring a sword, which is God's way of saying war, upon a land, and the people of the land take one man from among them and make them their watchman, and this watchman sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the horn and warns the people, then someone who hears the sound of the horn but does not take the warning, and a sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his head. He heard the sound of the horn but did not take warning. His blood will be on himself. But had he taken warning, he would have saved his life. But if the watchman sees the sword, remember that's war, coming and does not blow the horn and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes a person from them, he is taken away for his wrongdoing. But I will require his blood from the watchman's hand. And so not only do we learn from this passage that a horn or a trumpet is used for war as a warning, side note, check out my Amos Code series, but that the purpose of a watchman in context to modern times is not to watch for the rapture, but to watch for war. Isn't that interesting? And how do we know that? Because of Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, peace and safety, and then sudden destruction. In fact, even in context to celestial signs, as Jesus tells us in Luke 21, there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth, distress among the nations. And why Christ later states in verse 34, to be on our guard, and that this day will not come on us suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of all the earth. But stay alert at all times, praying that you will have the strength to escape all of these things. Because just as Jesus tells us, it comes like a trap. Which is what? What he tells us in verse 10. When nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. That is war, saints. The sword that's coming upon the whole earth. And so the rapture, saints, is tied to war. Nuclear war. Our left and our right, as they come to our convergence point, that's when the rapture happens. And the suddenness of this event, well, let's come back to our timeline. That's what the Pearl Harbor connection is about. A surprise attack. Peace and safety, and then sudden destruction, like a thief in the night. And coming back to our diagram, how does this tie to the serpent, Kuku Khan, downstream of our war rapture, nuclear war rapture? Well, saints, this can be found in Revelation chapter 12. Verses 7 through 12. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war, and they did not prevail. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down. And the serpent of old, there's that serpent, the plume serpent, the feathered serpent, Cuckoo Khan, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth. That's exactly what the Mayan prophecy is about. Granted, their prophecy depicts it 
as a significant achievement for this serpent to come back. However, from the book of Revelation, we know it's not by Satan's choice. He's been thrown down. And his angels were thrown down with him. That is pointing to some UFO activity, saints. But nonetheless, verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice and saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. Amen. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters have been thrown down, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. And because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when they faced death. For this reason, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Who is that? Who is the you who dwell in them? Saints, when Satan gets thrown down, we get lifted up. Which is why it says, Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you with great wrath, knowing that he only has a short time. And what's interesting, the Mayans aren't the only one with this prophecy exclusive about the deities of old coming down in the end times. In fact, if you're familiar with Norse mythology, Ragnarok incorporates that theme as well. In fact, interestingly enough, according to that mythology, Ragnarok will be preceded by cruel winters and moral chaos. Hmm, doesn't that sound reminiscent of our timeline? Not to mention the moral corruption of our time. In fact, their mythology, and remember that's all it is, just mythology, our Bible is our truth source. But they also highlight in this Ragnarok event that the sun will be darkened and that the stars will vanish. As giants and demons approaching from all points of the compass. And on the side, I recall from a previous video that Thor, it's interesting he's depicted in a lot of movies, is also a one for one of the Aztec and Mayans deity Chalk, who also has a lightning hammer. And Chalk is also mentioned in the movie Wakanda Forever, in part of Cuckoo Khan's origin story from the movie as part of its revamping and inclusive agenda. And so these details are in there for a reason. All pointing to our rapture and nuclear war convergence point and the subsequent throwing down of the serpent, the feathered serpent, Cuckoo Khan. And so even with our Ragnarok and cruel winter's connection to Cuckoo Khan and the winter solstice. Our timeline is pointing to nuclear escalation with a surprise attack like that of Pearl Harbor and a war convergence of events and Cuckoo Khan, the war god, highlighting the significance of the winter solstice along with our triple conjunctions not to mention the convergence of all these events being related to the number seven. A lot is pointing to nuclear escalation, as we have seen so far. And just to provide one extra detail, that is even what we see in the video, I Pet Goat 2, highlighting a nuclear explosion. Which ultimately means, saints, that we are almost out of here. The rapture is very close. And so what we really should be looking for is global tension. Because when that pops, that is when we go home, saints. Oh, and also, it's somehow connected to Purim. Not that the rapture is on Purim, but the rapture is related to Purim. I don't know how, nor do I think I will know how, as we don't know the day or the hour. But... It's connected to Purim. That was a word I heard from the Holy Spirit. Which concludes the main portion of this video. 
Now, Saints, I would like to add bonus content and highlight two unique details as two more unique events have occurred since producing this video and that tie in to exactly what we've been discussing throughout this video and specifically to the winter solstice as both events occurred on the winter solstice pointing to soon escalation. Okay, so the two events that occurred on the winter solstice was first the once in a generation winter storm what many are calling an arctic cyclone bomb as this storm unusually developed on the exact day of the winter solstice and anytime we see phenomenon like this there's something spiritual happening in the background as it matches exactly one of the characteristics that we saw about Ragnarok and cruel winters as this began on the first day of winter and so the storm of a generation landing on the exact day of the winter solstice. That's significant. Our second detail that landed exactly on the winter solstice as well was the fact that Zelensky landed in Washington being the very first time outside of Ukraine since the war began. Which I thought personally was highly unusual that he just so happens to meet the U.S. president on the exact day of the winter solstice. And Russia's response to this was that it now accuses the U.S. of a proxy war in Ukraine. And so this is severely ratcheting up the tension, pointing to nuclear escalation. And therefore, saints, because we have this Arctic cyclone bomb and Zelensky on the exact day of the winter solstice, and just like we saw earlier in a video, two events again merging on the same day. Which means, saints, that it's pointing to nuclear escalation very soon on the horizon. And gives further evidence for this pattern that we just walked through. But again, that just means the rapture is close. Which is where I want to end this video. Saints, I just want to thank you for watching. I appreciate all of you who continue to support this channel. Because we are all one body and make up different parts of Christ's body, I hope and pray that this video truly blesses you as my body part contribution to the whole of Christ's body. And the purpose of this channel is to point you to Christ. Whether studying celestial signs or fascinating numerical patterns, but that all of it points to Christ. And what a wonderful Savior we have. And may He be given all praise and glory and honor forevermore. Amen. And so with that said, I love y'all. Jesus loves y'all. And I'll see you in the next video.